All right. Uh, I'm going to start off with uh, the last video. Uh, a couple of comments. Uh, we're very, pretty interesting, you know. Um, let me start off with this. This one. And by the way, all we have to go off of is Europeanized version of history. Um, I, I will say this: this is a, a fair point, but we we have to. We don't have to, but you should consider that the Europeans are Negropeans. Okay. They are not the same as the people that experienced slavery. They are the slave masters. We're being taught, we're being shown through, through, through our own eyes the idea of white supremacy through our own lives. But as we start to look past our shoebox, and we start to look at the rest of the country and some of these things that don't make sense for the ideas or ideals that are being pushed, meaning the HBCUs. And we start to see that when they call it white privilege, we're starting to see it's actually about white supremacy. It's a privilege for them to pretend they are in control. Now, again, this is my opinion. I'm in a basement. I'm not part of this. I'm not part of that. So, to a degree, you can argue you're just saying stuff. And to, to that, I would reply, let's go ask Steve Coakley. He can't speak anymore, but he's got hours of video to express how he felt on this subject. Steve Coakley didn't spend his time, uh, these people did this to us, these people did that to us, and the pale. He, he, that's not, he said, these people did this to us, these people did that to us, and they look like us. That's why Steve was removed. And everybody knows it. You wouldn't know about the boule if it wasn't for Steve Copeland. Now, the idea here of not, not saying the truth out of my mouth, I'm saying the idea that we go by a Europeanized version versus what I just st said is, is still fair because things are being presented in a such way. Did Jephethites? Did the sons of Jepheth uh, uh, in, intermix with Afro people, with any of the Negroes, the slave master, or the slave? Don't know. Like it states here, it's presented at a specific angle. Who wants to say what the angle is, is the level of what they perceive. I don't mean to make it sound confusing. I mean, that's as, as clear as I can make it. We have Afro people that think they were Indians, yet all the records say that, well, the Indians uh, had Afro people as slaves. And when we say the Europeans came over and they warred with the Indians, well, some of them warred and some of them intermixed with them. So one of those places that they warred for and, and ended up intermixing is Martha's Vineyard. Now, I dare you to go into the history of Martha's Vineyard and you'll find out that half the island is the natives intermixed with the Europeans. And they're not pale. They're dark. Meaning, Negropeans came over and did that. And the other half is where the celebrities go. So you tell me. So it says 
even with their version of the Bible. I don't know, man. Uh, again, each of these videos I'm doing is from the information in the Bible, and, and, and this is where it got us. So it, it doesn't give us a hope. Eh. Which could be half truths and full of lies mixed in with actual truths. Everyone uh, within the waking, excuse me, awaking claims to be led by the Holy Spirit and all come to different conclusions as to who's who and what the history points out versus biblical understanding. Okay, that's fair, but I, I, I don't know what you see, the, the same thing, right? Biblical understanding, everybody still comes out with mixed understanding of the Bible. But see, that's the whole thing. Is it really mixed? Again, if, if you're the oppressor, you have no reason to read the Bible correctly. If you're the Dulé's children <laughs> that were set up in these Bible camp schools in the 90s, then you have no reason to read the truth. You're benefiting from it. You heard each of these Bible camps, all black people is the children of Israel. Well, how could that be? No, all black people are the children of Shem. But, no, but we all are, are not the children of Israel. And I think it's funny how when they teach you that all black people are the Israelites, and they never bring up the Judeans. See, it's, 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 there's, there's, there's these key things that, 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 that show you they're not being asked. So, as we go further, remember, other people outside of the Bible have discovered different elements or different puzzle pieces that make the picture easy to see. Now, again, if the curses happening in the Old Testament happen to specific Afro people, then again, uh, the whole world can see this. If all these different Afro people say, Oh, we we was here first. We we we's from everywhere, but in every location, we are not in control. We are marginalized. Then there's nothing wrong with the Old Testament. It's it's what's wrong is those that interpret it. What's wrong is the people that are willing to listen to misinterpretations. Let me explain something. Here's how it goes. You are you, just like everybody else is everybody else. They get a page. On that page, it offers them something. They either accept it or they don't. If the Bible says, the Most High's name is I am that I am. This is the law that Moses brought and the name that Moses brought. Shouldn't everybody be looking for videos that when someone says the Most High's name, it says, I am that I am. Now, I'll ask you, the viewer, not the writer of, of the statement. He, this is an excellent statement. I'll ask you, the viewer, is that what you see online? Or do you see, ooh, Yah Yahweh, Jehovah, Yahuwah, all these different names that are not in the book of exodus so whose fault is it if 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 they say well i will pay you to engage with people and mislead them then is it the person's fault for taking that job or the person's fault 
for being misled. See, at some point, the guy watching the porno, the guy watching the trash, got to take responsibility. See, that's that's the whole thing. Look, but fact, the fact is, only the most high is Yah truth. There is no fact in the name Yah. We thought Yah is the name of the moon, because that's what the the European, whether Negro Pian or, or not, that's what the books tell you. But in reality, we we read our people from right to left. So that's a mistranslation. And you haven't studied. So just like every other featherless parakeet, you're mimicking shit. And I can't help it if you read one or two books that said Yah, that don't mean you studied the name. That just means that you're repeating something that was written or said to you. There is no Yah. And everywhere you went, you blasphemed my name. You converted it, you twisted it, even when we see the name H-A-Y-A, -A, you still got people, I'm going to spell it, I'm going to spell it H-I-Y-A, -A. like again, everywhere you went, you blaspheme my name, it's the ignorance of us, because if I tell you this verse is in the Bible and you go, I didn't know that, then you had every day you wrote this and you had two days plus so this comment becomes like 50 50 just like you say in it because we don't all see the same thing things we we don't you believe the name of the Most High is Yah, yet in the book of Exodus, which is Genesis, is the book of, that's two books in. Chapter 3, verse 14, uh, who shall I say? tell them my name is I am, I am have sent you, uh, I am that I am shall be the the, the name they call me forever. So, technically, when it comes to the name, you don't care what the Creator says. And this goes for everybody else down that list because they care what they were taught or what they feel. So, everybody's got the right to think what they want, but just like somebody else has got the right to think that, you know, you're wrong. You know. So, here's another comment that Tazadak. A lot of the events, including the Dominican Order inquisitions across Europe, America, the siege of Eidhea, to the Israelite massacre of Kaimil. So, that's that ski at the end. I'm going to guess that's uh, Russian, Slavic, something uh, area. Uh, happened so close in time. The Catholics, the Roman Empire, were so busy burning and censoring books to a point where it agreed with their agenda. I'd go as far as to say that Rome made a cult out of their greatest enemy and a nightmare, Hannibal, 
for their new religion after the so-called Punic Wars. You know, and I have to agree with you because that shit is really close in history. It's, it, it's, it's, man, it's, it's hard to fit. It's hard to find King David's rule with how in close this mayhem is. Like, like, so, so we're going to discover it. It's just not, it's not going to be where we think it is because of how everything is. We have to use this book just like, just like a lot of these brothers are. If we, if we want to understand what's really going on. Um. There's another one that I want to read. All right. This one, this one, this one is pretty cool. This was, uh, I get a lot of, I get a lot of comments. Um, I get letters, uh, well, emails, not letters. Um, and I get, uh, long text sometimes. And, and some of them are, are, are thank yous. And it's because of this or it's because of that uh, that they've seen and it has led them to this or, you know, as I say this, some of you know that I'm talking about you because you, you, you've written me about how the information has changed your reality. All right. So I, I find this one's, this, this one's good because uh, it's one thing you say, okay, I have helped people that look like me. I've helped people who are in the same predicament as me. I have helped some of my brothers and sisters. Now, this is where it starts to extend past that fence line to where, to where like, I'm kind of, I'm kind of happy because it 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 ain't it it it's it's not like I don't know how to say this it. like you know there's some characteristics of oh what you've done is you've helped your people great great now it's like some characteristics of what you've done is has helped other people and it, like that's a that's a it's a it's a different feeling you know um. I just say that because I don't really know how to express it too real. Let's look. Hey, Lex, I was just peeping out the beginning of another great video. <clears throat> and I just, I must say how amazing you've been able to, uh, how you've been able, how amazing you've been able to find a lot of the Hispanics or today's Hispanics history. Boy, you should have been there. When the video was over, this is what sucks. Every time the video is over, then I go looking for, for images for it, and then it reveals something that wasn't revealed in the video. Yeah. So, for today's Hispanics, because I feel much of it is not even known to them entirely and has definitely been tucked away. Well, I'll, I'll I'll say that's a great statement, but I'm going to tell you what I think the problem is. Because when I read this, I realized what the problem is. There is a, a division of languages. So let's say... The, the elders of Japheth know how to speak the other languages to a degree, or know how to understand them. But the younger of Japheth don't comprehend any of this stuff. So, so as they're being conquered, some of them are able to, to record history. And some of them aren't. Some of the Hamites are allowing Japheth to record history. But Japheth's grandsons that are being taken far away they don't know how to read the language, write the language, and they're dealing with learning the new language. 
this is why you have the Maori say their specific history is slightly different from the other two groups that are being talked about, right? And then, and, 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 and so now at a time in history, somebody comes back and they start compiling these are uh, the people of this island, this island, this island. These are the people, mainland groups of this, this, and this. They all have the similar story and it compiles into it. And I think this is what uh, the actual problem is. Excuse me. And, and, and the solution is time. It's not, um, it's great that I did it, but like it, it was kind of there. It's that, it's that, it's that. In these modern times, the historic event is is not been scrubbed. It's been more forgotten. There's a book that holds the memory, and most people don't think, "Oh, we can look in this book and find the origin of of Hispanic." You can't. The word Hispanic isn't in that chapter. I don't think it's in the book. So nothing's going to tell anybody the origin of. Hispanics or the origin of like like if you're the tribe of the Alemanni, that tribe was named in there, you can find that in that, but but not necessarily the Tharshish. Even in that chapter, the Tharshish or Tarshish isn't even mentioned about where they go and dwell. Which means they were separated so much they weren't they were not recorded as having a main base at the time of the recording of Jashir. So, now, I'm, I'm, before I forget, the Tarshish that were taken mainland were turned into the samurai. I found it in the images, and then they start to tell you. Uh, and I'm, I'm saying it now, because if I just keep going with this, I might forget. And, and, I, and I want everybody to be able to know that, um, even if I forget. So, so the movie The Last Samurai ain't that much of a lie, except... It should be maybe Antonio Banderas or something like that, you know, or, or Xavier Bar, you know what I'm saying. Whoever they would hire that's more of a Hispanic or closer to, ah, listen, if the Germans look this way, and they all do, And the children of Javan look this way, and 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 they all right, right, right or, or or there's got to be an image of the main branch. So I would perceive the darker the the Hispanic is the more modern. I'm assuming that the paleo Hispanic is going to look somewhere closer to the Alemanni, which are the Germanic tribes, and there aren't dark-skinned Germanic tribes. So, I'm assuming from what the Bible says, the word pale rel uh, is relative to uh, blight. Uh, I'm assuming this has to do with at some point in history, they were on purpose, on accident, where they were forced to eat food with blight. I don't think this is all uh, uh, the way we see it. The Bible does, the, the, the Strong's Concordance has every opportunity, every opportunity to say, oh, they're this, they're that. They're not the sons of Japheth. They're tares. It could say anything like that. It does not. It says 
blight. That's what paleness is. Now, if you study blight, then you understand what's going on. It's that simple. Everything that leaves the, the, it leaves through the skin. The skin is a tailpipe. If blight is a form of mold that enters into vegetables, then it's a form of mold. What is the mold doing? Well, on its way out of the body, it decided to stay in the skin for some reason, probably design. And by that design, it can't escape the skin. And melatonin probably binds with it and stops melanation from occurring. That's my best. I live it. I, I study in a basement. I don't live in a basement. I study in a basement guest. That's my best. I study in a basement guest. Guesstimation. It's got to be more than that. I know. But the simplest equation. These are all word equations. Words are magic and there's a veil up to block it from working. Will the veil ever fall? I don't know. I don't even care. Now, he says, <clears throat> you found what uh, most of what I've been really researching for and single-handedly solved the mystery of our makeup. I speak for myself, born in Southern California, from a Guatemalan mother and father from El Salvador. Both sur surnames go back to Spain. Pilar is the name of a district in Spain. Ramirez, infamous, infamous name, goes back to Romero, definitely Castel, but my mother's younger pics, she looks very Asiatic, Chinese even, probably the root of the word Chinos. So does her father. So this would kind of give us the idea that See, don't just make it sound like this shit happened. The colonization. This is the problem I'm having with all this. This is why just reading it points at colonization of the Americas. The mo moments we were brought here. Somebody made another comment in the other video. What if the Israelites were brought forth first in 1492, and then when everything was set up, the Judeans were brought later in the 1600s? And that, that makes so much sense. That really does. But again, if, 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 if 1492 is still a colonizing moment, we have a huge issue, and this is the issue I have because the Book of Kings and everything, where does that fit into this? Because it's like, it goes from, it's almost as if you look at colonization at, as this moment, it goes from Genesis uh, 10, right? To, 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 to build the Tower of Babel and right into Israel. It's, it skips the kings of Israel to Israel fell and they're in captivity which makes sense on Jesus, Ptolemy, and King David lived at the same time. And David got a, 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 a daughter, uh, one of his wives from Ptolemy. You know, that makes, under those, it makes sense. It's, it's, it's just because, because the, the Dagon people are the Babylonians. They're still doing the dance. They just, they've been taken, everything's been stripped from them. So they're doing it in a tribal. They're the ones that, that, that have met the, 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 the ant people from the sea. They, uh, the, the fishmen ships, you know, and I know that's I'm just on a rant now, but that's why I wanted to do this. This stuff leads to so much, right? So does her, uh, so does her father, my grandfather. Chinos in, see, you understand it. Chizo, Chinos in Mesoamerica makes perfect sense. 
my father probably holds the strong male Spanish dominant gene and obviously goes back to the conquistador that went to uh, went into the Asiatics and brought them over here uh, from Southeast Asia and from the Phil Phil uh, Philippines. I keep wanting to say Philistines. They're not the Philistines. Um, the, from what I understand, the five tribes are. I'm just saying that because of the word mix up. And a couple. Well, oh man, I hear this all the time. I can't even pronounce it. When I, Mexico to create us in my opinion. This 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 is this one's very interesting. Very interesting. thank you all for the comments. I'm sorry. Uh it took so long to get uh it just brings a lot to mind. So much. Now um here is the interesting thing is we're back at Tarshish, right? Um, from Wiki Creation. And when we go down here, I want you to see how many times. Oh, and we skipped over it, right? Here it is in Japan, Japan, right? In China, Japan, Japan, Japan. So one would assume a good portion of, or a branch, uh, the Tarshish, this is where you get the Tarzan. They're taken into the jungle. And one of these start talking about how the, uh, uh, start with an M, Mandarin people got a hold of them. And this is how you get the word manga. Um, I forgot if I had to click on stuff, but that's a, just, just a side note. Um, ancient maps show that Sace or Saka right uh, across, says right across South Siberia and into Korea. The name Saka, this is from Scathian. Saka is one of the branches of Scathians. It's found in Japan, even on modern maps, Sekaki. Or Osaki, uh, you can see all these different places. In addition, the burial customs of the Japanese is as relative in the, excuse me, as revealed in the ancient tombs resemble those of the Scythians. That's the Catholics. Okay. Remember Kanye West said what? Elon Musk looked like a what? A white Chinese person. Or a Caucasian person. And a Chinese person. Uh, they were traditionally uh, the Dolem, right? So they're saying Dolems are 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 a Japanese thing. Now we read about Dolems in Europe, and they want to say that these is uh, 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 a Negro thing. No, it's not. It's a China. It's a Japanese constructed in China. None were built. So Chinese people don't build them. Japanese people build the dolem. Right? They were radically different to those in Korea. So the Koreans and the Japanese are closely related, but the Chinese is a different branch. They all go back to the same forefather, but they're not modernly related that close. So then they started talking about the dolems in the Caspian Sea. Um, no, excuse me, and no dolems are found east of the Caspian Sea. We read that part last time. That part is confusing. Like they draw in this imaginary line and saying this and that, showing that the Canaanites came from other parts of Europe or West Europe. Now, states, uh, they do uh, uh, symbol, three legged symbol somewhat like the swastika in shape so you know round looking like spinning but it's got three legs instead of four all right so tarsis the tarsis the tarsian tarsian i keep wanting to add the sissy for some reason all right so here's where you get ang 
and Zuko and stuff. We talked about it, the firebender, because they are smelting or the refiner. Now this will start to make sense because of what? The swords of these things. So when the Spaniards first encountered the Japanese, so I would look at this as when the Medes received Babylon. Uh, that, that's that's the best way to look at it because it doesn't make sense because see first you have the, the the people we call the Asians coming and warring with the sons of Jefes which would include the Spaniards they move them some time has passed now the sons of Jepheth have gained power, and then, right, and we're seeing from the colonization of the sons of Jepheth acquiring Babylon as a property, and Ham will be, and Canaan will be his servant, and this is what we're seeing. And and it's just it's just hard to separate the two because again the, the colonization of uh, of these lands by the sons of presumably by the sons of Japheth because uh, again they're 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 with the sons of Shem again just like yeah I'm not going to it's it's the opposite of uh, the book of Jashir we'll, we'll we'll look at it uh, but I'll keep going so. So when they first uh, met the Japanese, they referred to them as the Spaniards of Asia. So that seems like a weird statement if we didn't read what happens in the book of Tashir, which they meant as the Tarshish of Asia. So some would say, you know, maybe they understand they're related maybe that's why this is right this is where the eastern tarshish is in japan the spanish were aware of the presence of tarshish and uh in spanish excuse me spanish were in spain excuse me in spain in ancient times so the spanish were aware of the presence of tarshish in spain in ancient times But the Spanish are the Tarshish. So what they're saying is the Spanish were. And I'm not I'm not mean to change the sentence. You see, it's it's bullshit. It's saying that the 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 people that became the Spanish that were taken from the island and moved to Spain and when. They are aware of the presence of the people that picked them up and moved them there. Which means they did a land swap. Why? Because the Canaanites did not want to deal. See, this is so. It's not the land of Ham. So, so the land of Cain would have been Europe, or what we're calling Europe. And so they they moved these guys to to Europe, right? Ah, uh, see, this is funny. So this this is where it's all gonna go to. Like it's 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 the little things though. All right, so. Where does the name Japan come from? Very likely from Javan and uh, name Ji Ji Pun, something like that, was used by the Chinese of them and late came to mean rising sun. Okay, so the rising sun, the sun that will rise up. Now, when we look at all these names of all these people, well, one of one of Javan's sons rose up and is on the uh, statue of Nebu Chad Nazir, right? That's what we're being told. When we read the Bible, uh, one of Job and sons purchased us. That's what Bible's telling us, right? The Greeks did this, the Greeks did that. And the Japanese people themselves refer to themselves as Nihonjin and to their language as Nihongo. And 
both Nippon and Nihon, the Japanese name for the sun origin or the land of the rising sun. Kittim, who we just brought up, whether you know it or not, the Greeks, in northeastern China, now again, Javan make up the Hellens. That's what they're telling us. Elisha's son, Javan, make up one branch of the uh, Kittim, make up another branch. You'll start to understand. It's not, they not all, like Javan don't come out of all one people. That's why they never refer to Kittim, or they try not to refer to Kittim as the Greeks, because they're not all the Greeks. It's because the Greeks and the Hellens, and we think it's a time period, but it's not. It's two different tribes that are brothers. That's why they, 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 when the Greeks fight the, themselves, you think, why are they fighting themselves? But it's two different brothers. It's the Hellens, Elisha's children won't take shit. They got the name Jesus from Elisha. El hyphen Isa. Who's the dude in um in Islam stuff? It's Isa, right? Who's the dude in the ancestor worship? It's Isa, right? Yeah. So y'all been taught, we all been taught to worship the ancestor Elisha. But who is Kittim versus Elisha? Well, Kittim is the power. They they produced the prince that took the world. The family of the great, which is now in Russia, is out of Kittim, not out of Elisha. How can we understand? Because we've been studying this. And it, and it starts to depict itself once you start studying this. Now, I'm going to show you, say, Kittim in northeastern China are taller than the Magogites, have lighter skins, and are dociolophilic, so whatever. <clears throat> now, all you have to do is just look up these individual names and then put the word people behind it, and then you'll see what the sub-branch is. If they show you people that do not look close to Germanic or have pockets of Germanic features, then they're showing you Canaanites. And let me show you what I mean. They're, they're going to show you intermixed people. Now, when they show us the intermixed people, the unmixed is going to look what we call Caucasian. And the other side of the unmixed is going to look Asiatic or Austrian, or one or the other. Now, when the two come together, they make a unique mixture that looks like both, but not exact on either end. Now, the best thing that I thought to do is not go through all of them, but just go down. And they said, these are the dark people. And they're all considered strains. So they're being marked as divided this is the strain not the origin this is the strain what do they mean these are mixtures now when we looked up the word tartessos they already gave it away their tartessos people are pre-hispanic Okay, now, here's the problem with that. They can't be, because the pre-Hispanics would have lived on the islands before the war, and we have no image of them. For the Tartessos to set up in Spain mean they've already been conquered, admixture has already occurred, and they've been moved. So, when they give us, these are the original people, there's no way that, that we've seen the Anui. That's probably the closest. Why? Because they're not dark. That's why. If Ham is the dark-skinned races, 
then these children here being mentioned have to be created by what? Darkness. And so these aren't going to be the images that we would associate with them. But we'll look them up anyway. Now watch. When we go sat suma. Services. Show me the sat suma people. Now you shout survey says come out. And then we're gonna hit images. And then and there we go. Sat suma domain. Right? Because this is all about land wars. And then it takes us to these are the images of the sat suma people. Now you and me, we were born last year. This shit happened presumably a while ago. How can we tell what's what and all that shit? Well, to a degree, we can't. We have to have some kind of... In the movies, they say it's called suspension of disbelief. If I'm looking for the origin of a caucus race, then am I going to find them dark? Am I going to find them light? Are they going to look like this? Are they going to look like that? So if I'm looking for the caucus race and you show me just straight up Orientals, excuse me, uh, if you just show me straight up Japanese people, I'm not going to fall for that. Like, like, these people come from the Australoid, I, I'm not, I, 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 I'm saying it wrong, but they have, they have a race. Just like if you said, this is the Negro race, and these are the different groups of the Negro race, you, 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 you would kind of get it. Because you've seen different types of people that that a negro you look one way you look at them on screen and you're like or in a picture and you're like i don't look nothing like that where are they from so it's the same with these as we look over here they're going to show us different groups presumably under the name sat sumo Again, are these real or not? Are these the people we're looking for? Well, first off, we're not really looking for anybody. We're just, they offered a name. We're just looking to see, like, this is supposed to be so old in history. The name shouldn't have any, this is what should be associated with it. Fucking drawings. Now, when you say these people uh, uh, were intermixed with Canaanites, well, what do we expect to see? Your expectations are one thing. My expectations are one thing. I'm not saying my expectations are another. I, I, I don't know what yours are, so how can mine be any different? So, this seems kind of interesting how you have, even though this is a black and white picture, you have people that look what we would call Asian, but they don't have the yellow uh, uh, Yeah, that's hard to really argue with a black and white picture. I'm going to save that one. I'm going to save that argument for a colored picture. Um, and we don't want modern stuff because, you know, Modern stuff is, is 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 generation before me. You know, this seems to be like the dawn of the camera image right here. You know, so one could daydream all they want. You know, figure figure it out. Whether these are them or whether these are the people that have been over, put over them or whether these are the product 
of the two groups to come together. Which is most likely why we're getting towards this last samurai idea. You can see some faces look kind of English. Some faces do not. Like this face doesn't look very English. What we would call English. This face doesn't look look more more Negro than English. You know. He looks more Indian than English. You know. So looking for one thing you know other things pop up and make your choices you know it dilutes your opinion so that's why i just i'll just show this and not argue this must be them or that must be them because there a lot of them are drawn because that would have been closer to the time period a lot of them are drawn pale, which makes sense under these groups. Uh, and this is what I mean. Like, they definitely have the colors to be able to say. We're going to draw them with gold skin or, or, or tan skin. You know. This is this is the argument of the Greek vases. There are Greek vases with white skin, but what now? Oh, this doesn't want to come up on screen. So the Greek vases with white faces are the white Greeks, the Hellens and Kittim, and the Greek vases with the dark faces are the Danites. Now, again. When you see today people playing the whole, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cake my skin, right? But what are they doing in the past? They have an intermixed population. Some are, are actually white with Asian features, right? Or what we would call Asian. You, you get what I'm saying, right? So what do you have now? You have a, you have a society. That, that if people want to look more like the opposite in society, they start doing stuff to their skin with products. What are they doing with the whole kabuki face? Why are they painting their face white? When the Europeans, or what we call the Europeans, go back into, why, why are they being called devils at this point? So, we start to see the different pieces falling in history around Asian territory. Now, when we sit there and say, I'm done with that, let's read this one more time. Book of Jashir, chapter 7. And these are the names of the sons of Noah. Japheth, Ham, Shem, and the children were born to them after the flood, <coughs> for they had taken wives before the flood. And the sons of Japheth, Gomer, Magog, Mahdi, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, Tirez, seven sons. <clears throat> the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, Rif, Af, T, Garma. The sons of Magog, Eli, Chanif, Lubal. The sons of Mahdi are Achion. Zillo, Chazoni, and Lot, the sons of Javan, were Elisha, Tarshish, Chittim or Kittim, Dudanim, the sons of Tubal, Arphi, Kesed, Ta'ari, 
and the sons of Meshach were the Dedan, Zaron, Shibashni. The sons of Tiraz were Ben Benib Gera Lup I Eon and Gaelic. <laughs> Gaelic Gaelic. These were the sons of Japheth according to the families, and the numbers in those days were about four hundred and sixty men. Now there you have that is the number of men on one side of the war. And the sons of Ham, Cush, Mizraim, put Canaan. Remember, in Hebrew, these names are not so. They're different in Hebrew. Remember, in Cham, in the Chamites tongue, that's not how they say their name. They don't say it Ham. They call it Cham. In Japheth's tongue, that's not how they say these names. Remember, Eastern Europe, oh, we didn't get to it yet. Eastern Europe is closer to Japheth's original tongue. Whoever lived in Europe, the Iberians uh, and the sons of Peleg, the Pelagassians, those are Negroes. So one would have to argue the Germanic people whom say they are the English, whom did they take the English language from? Wherever they fit in, that's whose language this is. So each of these peoples have these names written differently. We're only looking at the English version. Now, and the sons of Cush, Mitzrayim, put Canaan. Four sons of Ham and the sons of Cush, Seba, Havila, Sabta, Ra'ama, Sat, Satika, and the sons of Rama are Sheba and Dedan. Ain't not even gonna do it. Not even gonna do it. And the sons of Mitzrayim were Lud, Enom, and Pathros. This very well could be the Amen that you read in the Bible, because the word Amen is not. Hebrew, I'll put it to you like this. If you go to the Strong's Concordance and you look up the word Amen, and if it translates into another word, then we've been had. So, Pathros, Kaslo. What animal do they name them after, right? The sloth. And Cathor. Now, Goes in. I know we're speaking English, but where do you find the sloth? Like, you'll find Egypt to be closer than it is to what they tell you. Yeah. The sons of Push, uh, put, Push, were Gabal, Hadan, Bena, Dina, and Adan. So he liked that name, Dan, a lot. Sons of Canaan were Zidon or Sidon, Heth, Amari, Amorites, Gergashi, Hivi, Acre, Seni, whom we perceive to be the Chinese based on the literature that's available. Ar, Ar excuse me, Arodi, uh, we'll go with that, Le Zimori, and the Hamas Chamothi. 
These were, oh, see, there you go. The sons of Hamath and Havilah. See, that reminds me of that. All right, so we're going. And these are the sons of Ham, according to families. And their numbers in those days were about 730 men. Do you see that? So there's only a few, few people left after the flood. And Ham, his children, outnumber Japheth's children. 460 million. Might as well say 450. And this is 730. Might as well say 725. Now you see how this war is going? 725, well, 730 men roll up to you. And you're on an individual island. You're not even, you can't even get 460 of these dudes. This isn't even counting the women. You need women to make men, so, right? So you're talking about Let's double it. Uh, a, a society of 1,400 people attacking a society of eight, 900 people. That's what this battle is about. And the men of each society, right, cut it back to the original numbers, cut it in half, and they, and they go out. So, and here's the sons of Shem. Now, of the sons of Ham, it is, it, it did, did it say when, when when they went to war with them? It say seven hundred people went. No, it said about five hundred people went. So of the seven hundred people of Ham, seems like a good portion didn't even go. And so this makes sense why the hiring of the sons of Shem. And these are the sons of Shem: Elam, Asher, our fat child. That's my joke. Our fashad, Lud. And Aram, <laughs> five sons, and the sons of Elam were Shushan, Machu, Harman, and the sons of Asher were Myrus, Mokul, and the sons of Arphashad are Shelash, Shelash, yeah, Shelash, or Shelach, and there, and Ashkel, and the sons of Lud were Pethor and Z Bizayan, and the sons of Aram were Uz, Chul, Gather or Gadder, and Mash, and the sons of Shem, according to their families and the, and their numbers. In those days were about 300 men. So, again, 300 times 2 to account for the women. That's a society, not a war party, a society of about 600 people. And these are the generations of Shem. Shem begot Arphashad, and Arphashad begot Shalak, and Shalak begot Eber, and two Eber were born two children, and the name of one was. Peleg or Phileg, for in those days were the sons, excuse me, for in his days the sons of men were divided, and in the latter days the earth was divided. What does it mean, divided? It doesn't mean uh, Pangea, that the earth separated. No, it means that they drew lots and divided the land amongst men. <clears throat> now it says, and the second name, Yachtan, oh, excuse me, and the second son, Yachtan, oh, here it is, the second, and the name of the second was Yachtan, excuse me, got confused on the scroll. Now, the first son of Eber is Peleg, and the next son is Yachtan, that's, fuck me. It's right in our face. Yorktown. Not Yucatan. Yorktown. <laughs> oh, good old-fashioned Europe. And the Isles of Ebony. Type in the Isles of Ebony and you'll understand 
There's no Caucasians in Europe that's going to name the land Isles of Ebony. If they was in the land, they would name it Isles of Ivy. Ebony and Ivory. Yeah, I just can't do it. Yeah. Ebony and Ivory. We're together in a uh, xenophobic You're talking about piano, right? And the, the minor keys are the on the left, or actually, oh boy. Now, you gotta understand it. It's, it's, it's musical, right? Now, I do what? Pollute my heritage first. Ebony. I pollute the ebony first. Drop that down to 440. No, you brainwash everyone. Uh, so here we go with Yorktown, meaning that in his day, the lives of the sons of men were diminished and lessened. All right, ain't that the history of Europe? I bet we're going to find that's why it's called Yorktown. And these were the sons of Yachtan, the Almodad. Uh, I always want to. That's just a sidetrack. There's she left. Cha Chazar moveth. Chazar moveth, something like that. Again, this is just the English word. You go to Strong's Concordance. Look up what it says in the Strong's Concordance and then search Google for it. And then here we have Yurik. Yurik. Like Eureka, like the moon. That's the that's the actual name of the moon, Eureka, not Yah. Excuse me, I have a final ash that abandoned ship. So. Uh, Hadorum, Ozel, Dikla, <laughs> Obal, Abimal, Seba, Ophir, Havala. Oh, well, there's Havala Street. And Jobab, these are the sons of Yachtan, which I presume, since Eber is the Iberian coast, his sons are going to go to the Iberian coast, right? That's, that's why it's named there. So I'm I'm pretty sure this is all going to be... That's why I was going to look up Almada, because there's an Arab tribe that was living in Spain. Uh, uh, I forgot what it's called. Like it's it's not Andalusia, Andalusia, but they probably named it Andalusia because of Almodad. Uh and the and and Peleg or Feleg his brother begot Yen and Yen begot Sugar. See why the money in Asia called Yen? He does some shit, right? And Sugar begot Nahor, and they call the land of Japan Nahan, right? I'm just saying, I'm not saying Nahor is from Nahan. I'm just saying, look at how the Asian names all revolve around uh, Shem's stuff, right? And Nahor begot Tara, and Tara was 38 years old, and he begot Haran and Nahor. Ain't that some stuff that when you read in the Bible, everybody get kind of older and then they be got well i didn't say how old anybody else was did he? i mean this is one of the youngest ages you read that somebody had a child you know like abraham right very old when he had children right abraham you and sarah are gonna have a child sarah's like ah, this dude's kicking it on me stop making jokes i'm the creator hey what and cush the son of ham so now they went back to ham now, this is where we're familiar with. The son of Noah took a wife in those days in his old age. See what I mean? Everybody had an old age. But Terah is like 38 years old. He's like, ah, oh, yeah. And she bare a son, and they called his name Nimrod. So at that time, the sons of men began, excuse me, again began to rebel and transgress against God. And the child, and the child grew up 
And the father loved him exceedingly, for he was the son of his old age. And he gave him the sword of Eternia, the, excuse me, the garments and skin of, of which um, the power of Grayskull himself, right? Uh, excuse me, uh, God gave, uh, God made to Adam, uh, Prince Adam, excuse me. Uh, wow, this is funny how this lines up with Enoch. And the garments which God gave for Adam and his wife, when they went out of the garden, were given unto Skeletor. Right? It's, it's funny how, like, in the movies, good guys win, but in reality, like, the bad guys win, right? For after the death of Adam and his wife, the garments which were given to Enoch, the son of Jared, and Enoch was taken up with God. In and that's why Enoch became Enoch. Wow, okay. See, again, man, you can read this. As many times as you want, about the 10 times you're going to get every little drop this has to offer. And after the, uh, gave his, uh, Enoch was taken up, he gave them to Methuselah, his son. And then Methuselah uh, died. Noah gave, uh, Noah took them, and see, Methuselah didn't even give them to Noah. And he just died, eventually dying. And Noah took them and brought them onto the ark. And they were with him until he went out of the ark. And in their going out, uh, Ham already knew the story that Methuselah was given those. He, he, he never uh, gave them to Noah as an heirloom. It was just entrusted to him because Noah was his son and his caretaker of his inheritance or his estate. And then Ham, being part of the estate, then stole them before Noah's death, right? And he took them and he hid them from his brothers because he didn't want his brothers to receive them. And then he can't be seen with that shit. So they hiding for a whole, hiding this shit for a whole generation. Right until his old age, until he had this baby that he loved so much. And then they're going out, he stole the garments, and he, when he begot his firstborn Cush, he gave the garments to him in secret. And because he told Cush, this is a secret, Cush never wore that shit. And they were with Cush many days. Cush also concealed them from his sons and his brothers. He never wore that shit. And and what a generation went by forgetting that part of the story. It became a mystery to them when they told their sons about this shit. Japheth telling his sons, there used to be these great garments. What happened to them? It's a mystery. One of y'all stole them off the ark, right? And so and then it gets down to it. Cush has Nimrod, and he gave those garments though, through his love. These I stole. Huh? These grandpa stole, right? This is why grandpa evil, thou shalt not steal. And he stole from his father, right? Ham did. Hid the shit. And here we go. It's being passed down, right? Gave, that's the inheritance. Gave to him in secret. And then Cush hid it and then had Nimrod. And he gave them through his love. Love don't mean high shit. So Nimrod, huh? the stolen jersey, puts on the stolen jersey a generation uh, after everybody forgot. And this goes and starts kicking butt. In it. Kicking mad butt. Doo-doo shoe butt. Oh. And Nimrod grew up. And when he was 20, he put those on and he went to the basketball courts, huh? That's not what they did. He became strong when he put on the garments. By the power of the 
garments and God gave him. See, this isn't what we would think. God knows what is happening. God knows what has happened. But God gave him strength. Are you starting to see what's going on? Do I need? So when he puts the garments on, the Most High chooses whether to activate the garments. Just wearing the garments doesn't activate the garments. It's not some belt. When you put on the belt, you turn into a werewolf. It's not like that. It doesn't work like that. Let's go into the Bible. Let's read. Let's read about Balaam in Balaam. And one of those cast a spell against the Israelites, but the Most High did not approve the spell. Does anybody comprehend what the f is going on with that? Nimrod puts on the garments and the Most High activates the garments and says, you may be powerful. A witch is over there brewing some shit up in the past uh, before the world has been given to the hands of the wicked. And the spell has to go through the approval of who? The Most High. Are you are you not seeing what's going on? But then did he did he pass his torch to the to the king of the world? Because they say the, the king of the witches now is what? Lucifer? That's a made up name. That's Hallel. And Hallel isn't what we think it is. It's the dude that wrote the Talmud. And Jesus isn't what we think he is. He was a man and he was brought up in the clouds and given domination over hell and death. When Jesus uses power, he uses the power of Beelzebub, which would make Beelzebub more in control of witchcraft today. That's almost like saying the God of the Bible is Beelzebub. Blasphemy! But we know that it will happen. The power of the, the, the earth was given to the hands of the wicked. We're being told this wrong. We just we, we we have to exclude men. We can't listen to what men are saying because men have a goal. We have to take. Do I believe this guy talking or do I believe Isaiah? Do I believe Ezra? Listen, when we get to a, the only problem we should ever have is do I believe Daniel or do I believe Ezra? That's the problem we should have. Do I do I believe Moses, or do, do I believe Jeremiah? That's the problem we should have. We should never take a man's word over these scriptures. But man has manipulated and fucking study. It becomes pretty easy what's, what's changed and what's left out once you get a, a few years into it. Nothing's right away. Everybody thinks everything's right away. Well, there comes a time you realize some of this shit's written poetically. Then you know, like, they're trying to chronicle things. They're not trying to write shit like poem. So then, when they start writing in this poem fashion, they're try that's when they're trying to hide something. So, 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 if they give you a riddle, you have to acknowledge that there's a riddle there. If you don't acknowledge that there's a riddle there, then you're not going to think the Bible's really altered. You just think it's altered from your beliefs. Everything is written as a riddle because if if it was just told to you straight out, it'd be too obvious and you'd be able to stop it. These things have been pushed into dimensions. They, they can't come here. The children live and die here. The things under the ground, there's been a veil. Imagine you go so far down into the ocean 
pain, you get pressurized pain. So what happens when they come to the surface? The sun Fs them over. Have you seen what's going on? People are starting to report the orbit of the sun is starting to move away from us. And now at night, it it's, gets all sweaty outside, like it's going to freeze, like because of the moisture in the air and there's not enough sunlight to burn up the moisture. So these things have been kept away from us for some time. That time's a changing. The veil is the sun. So up until this point, for the most part, it's been mainly men. Right? Ephesians 6 and 12. Uh, it's not men. It's these powers that be. It's, it's men come together and make agreements on paper. Then you're, then you're fighting the system. But the system is men because men swear, do not take an oath, men swear to carry out these things. How do you have a fucking constitution that says you have these rights and the and, and every day you see these rights being violated by a guy that lives down the street, down the block, or around the corner from the guy he's violating. Nimrod put on these garments and he becomes strong and God gave him the might and the strength and he was a mighty hunter in the earth. Yea, he was a mighty hunter in the field, and he hunted the animals, and he built altars, and he offered upon them the animals before the Lord. And Nimrod strengthened himself, and he rose up amongst his brethren, and he fought the battles of his brethren against all his enemies round about. And the Lord delivered all the enemies of his brethren in his hand. And God prospered him from time to time in his battles, and he reigned upon the earth. Therefore, it became current in those days when a man ushered forth those that he had trained up for battle, he would say, like God did to Nimrod, who was a mighty hunter in the earth, and who succeeded in all the in the battles that prevailed against his brethren that he delivered them from the hands of their enemies so may god strengthen us and deliver us this day so what is that like that's what they would say that was their their their, their go-to saying i don't want to say mantra because it that's closer to witchcraft this isn't a prayer okay like just keep that in mind <clears throat> when Nimrod was 40, so he done been doing this for 20 years, okay? Putting on the Superman jersey, right? Sacrificing to the Most High. You don't, don't skip that. He's sacrificing to the Most High for, the, for the, all these years because he's the one giving him power. When Nimrod was 40. At the time, there was a war between his brethren and the children of Japheth, so that they were in power of their enemies, so that they were in the power of their enemies. So what does that mean? Japheth was winning? So Nimrod's got to come and save the day, right? So what is, what is this? Uh, Nimrod went forth at that time, and he assembled all the sons of Cush and their families, about 460 men. That's the same amount of men that Japheth had. Hmm? And he hired also from some of his friends and acquaintances about 80 men. And I am assuming he and B gave them their, that's, I don't know, he gave them their hire, I would assume. And he went with them to battle and when he was on the road, Nimrod strengthened the hearts of the people that went with him. 
And he said to them, do not fear, neither be alarmed, for our enemies will be delivered into our hands and you may do with them as you please. And all the men that went were about 500 and they fought against their enemies and they destroyed them and subdued them. And Nimrod placed standing officers over them and their respect in the respective places. So I would assume when we look at these pictures, we are not seeing Japheth. We very could, well could see one or two. Don't know. I would assume these would be uh, the standing officers. Hence, uh, the samurais reign over different territories. How they were able to go freely. If they got kings and queens and dynasties and this and that, why would they let the samurai roam freely? Until there come a time that what? The king or queen or this or the Ming or any of these dynasties become so powerful, they start to uh, uh, envelop what Nimrod has done for them. And he took some of the children as security, and they were all servants to Nimrod and his brethren. And Nimrod and all his, all the people that went with them, turned homeward. Now, when we look at the pictures, we we individually look these up. We look at these pictures, and they look more what we would say are closer to Ham than we would say to Japheth. Then these probably ain't the children. Of Japheth. They're probably children of Ham. No. By the father's seed. Right? And that's how it goes. No. Are they saying, oh, we defeated you, Japheth. You can take some of these women of our. No, they're not. That's not how defeat goes. When you live in society together for a while, yeah, it goes like that, but that's not how defeat goes. We're at the sixth, the end of the seventh generation. For some, it's more since slavery. For years, people have gotten murdered for intermixing. Misogyny. So the same standards would probably arise here. So it would be generations into an intimate, into a to a mixed society before intermixing is approved. From the slaves end, from the oppressors end, it can happen from day one. Because who has the power? You may do with them as you please. Uh, standing officers over them. Uh, they're not. Well, hey, Nimrod, can I take these three women? Uh, Nimrod, don't give a shit. He already gave you. Do it. That's what he in, intended when he said you can do whatever you want with them. And this isn't to, to insult anybody. We just fucking live this. So it says he took the children of security and they went. They were all servants to Nimrod. Nimrod, can I have these three women? No, bring them to me. I want them. And to his brethren and Nimrod and all his people, uh, they returned homeward back to Europe. Wherever Nimrod was from. We got all these pyramids here. There's no telling where he's from. But we can tell where some of these individuals are from, especially if they say, well, they were mingled with Japanese, or the Japanese were the standing officers placed over the Tarshish. Now, Tarshish say, well, we can see some of, we, we can see evidence of the people that brought us here.
So that becomes the argument later in the Wikipedia. Are the Tarshish the Japanese ships or are they the Spanish ships or are they just large freighters that can travel the ocean? But that gets so far away from who are the Tarshish of Japheth. We already found that Tartessos are pre or paleo or original Hispanics. Now, are the dark Hispanics the original Hispanics? Well, that's that's just questionable. Was everybody dark? And then eventually uh, something like pasteurization or something affected them as blight? I don't know. Is this the moment they were affected by blight? I don't know. The Strong's Concordance says what it says. And he took some of the children as security. They went homeward, and Nimrod had joyfully returned from battle after having conquered his enemies, all his brethren, together with those who knew him, assembled, and they made him king over him, and they placed a regal crown over his head. He already ruled the world. Now they're making it official. And of course, if this is how, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, I forgot, I started with an I, when, when they takes the throne, right? And then everybody mimics this when they take the throne. Incumbate, no, wait, that's not, I forgot what it is. Yeah, so he's set over his subjects and his people. Wait, wait, let's go back up. This is, what does it say? They delivered into the hands of whatever. The world is theirs now. All right. <clears throat> and he placed Terah, son of Nahor. So this tells you that Nahor and Terah are alive at this time. Because one of the stories is Nimrod gets word of the birth of Abraham. So. And he placed Terah, the son of Nahor, prince of his host. Now, this is the host. He set over his subjects, over the people, princes, people, princes, judges, and rulers. And what do you have in this land? Right? You have citizens and you have you have citizens and you have over them he set over his subjects so in America we are like Japheth children he made them citizens and he put over them his own people and his own people would be the nationals and he put over them princes which would be the governors and he put over them the uh 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 judges remember if, if the governor of ohio make a decision and it's a bad law decision it goes to the courts and he put over them rulers now the lieutenant governors report to everything out of state. The president is in control of the federal. He's the real actual prince. So he did not put over them demons, wizards, gargoyles, lizard men, or anything like that at this point. Since the moment of the flood, these things have been put under into into different pockets. This is a fucking aquarium within an aquarium within an aquarium. We are one pocket of the aquarium, the pocket that need air to breathe. Okay? Think about it. Inside water is what? 
hydrogen and oxygen, right? H two O. So the breathing air is in the water. The water droplet got to crash on something, and then it what splits and knocks a little bit of oxygen out of there. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? The hydrogen is converted into energy to keep the water flowing until it what dissipates and the waves stop moving. That's an assumption. I'm in a basement. Uh, so while he reigned, while he was reigning according to his heart's desire, everybody's heart's evil. So at this part, right? Uh, absolute power corrupts absolutely, right? And after he conquered all his enemies, he advised he advised with his counselors to build a city for his palace, and they did so. So they went. They found a large valley opposite the east. So we go all the way to the east. So opposite to the east is still in the east, and they built him a large and extensive city and Nimrod called the name of the place of that city he built Sinar. And we know it's not Shinar because M.W. Smith has discovered the true location. And we can simply just type Sinar, India. Now, all we have to do is figure in how to find Nimrod's palace. I'd imagine it's still standing. So, I should probably continue. And the Lord had vehemently shaken his enemies and destroyed them and nimrod dwelt in sinar and he reigned securely and he fought with his enemies and he subdued his enemies and he's prospered in all his battles and his kingdom became very great and all nations and tongues heard of his fame and they gathered themselves to him and they bowed down to the earth and they brought him offerings and he became their lord and their king and they all dwelt with him in the city city of shinar and nimrod reigned in the earth over all the sons of noah and they were all under his power and counsel and the earth was of one tongue and words of union. So, again, and all nation and tongues heard of his fame. So, it was, the earth was under one tongue. That doesn't mean we necessarily said the exact same words, but we said the same. Just like in English, compared to Hebrew, kind of close. This is what we're kind of getting at. We can see with English, we're getting back to this. We're, we're circumventing the Most High's curse. So it's stating, and again, we're just getting lazy. We're going to use technology to be able to translate face-to-face, -face, right? So instead of beating the curse, out of lawfulness training ourselves to understand every language because you can't force everybody to one language because then you can't read the books of the past anymore see we're putting all this work we're doing lazy shit and putting making the computer our workhorse in the computer's program so you know you can tell it 2 plus 2 equals 8,000, and that's what it will tell the world. And if everybody gets it wrong, the computer will develop this mentality as if the world is stupid. Why do you not know 2 plus 2 is 8,000? So 
it's not what we think it is. It's 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 a it's a it's some kind of pattern machine. You give it a pattern, it can find that pattern by analysis. So it's really it's really the imagination of what the Batcave computer can do. It's really what it is. <clears throat> it, you know. Uh, yeah, the computer doesn't exist, but it's 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 what they imagine it to be, right? So, and he made gods of wood and stone. And this is the moment, right? Everybody's a one tongue, but Nimrod did not go in the ways of the Lord. He was more wicked than all the men that were before him from the days of the flood until those days. He made gods of wood and stone, and he bowed down to them, and he rebelled against the Lord, and taught all his subjects and the people of the earth his wicked ways. And Mardon, his son, was more wicked than his father. Remember, who made us? Who made us? Was this on accident? Who made us? Was this on purpose? Who made us? You have to consider these things. Is it just a giant play for him to just come in and destroy the shit that he doesn't like. How can we have free will if things are written in our hearts? When you interact with this, you shall do this. You should do this. You might do this. The voice in your head tells you to do this. You're being told the voice in your head is outside voice, but it's inside voice, and it's not in your head. It's in your heart. It just echoes in your head. Who did this? So if he's doing the wicked shit in his heart and his son is more wicked than he is, right? But who designed him to do this? Well, bam, you take a step back outside of it and start looking inside. Wait a second. The most high creating what? creating the enemy. There is no fucking enemy. The enemy is the shadow of thyself. But thy shadow is not alive. Thy shadow is a what? It's void of life. Fuck, man. Light only hits the outside of it, well, sunlight penetrates. Oh, shit, this is crazy. Cell photosynthesis and cell division, and cell death and cell life. We're just guinea pigs. But unique guinea pigs. I wrote bad shit in your heart, but I gave you free will. You can listen to the bad shit, and I can see you cannot overcome your inner darkness. Because I gave you an inner darkness. But if you can overcome the inner darkness that I have written inside of you, then you have survived my survival of the... That's why they call it the fucking Hunger Games. Can you stay righteous? Starving. Can you stay righteous? Rich. 
Can you stay righteous if you are nothing? Look at the Israelites. Here's the Israelites. Here's their land, and their land is being taken from them right away. Can you stay righteous, oppressed? Can you stay righteous under this? And what did Babylon do? Nimrod's not even at Babylon. He's the Babylonians with the Chaldeans. Chaldea is ba Babylonian. And what do they do? Well, they're worshiping the host of heaven. Nimrod's making idols of the host. So what? So he don't have to look up and hurt his neck? You can start to see what's happening here. What all these trinkets and knickknacks really mean. Everyone heard the acts of Mardon, the son of Nimrod, would say concerning him, from the wicked goeth forth wickedness. Do you see this? In the beginning, it's, oh, any man who trained up his son uh, to go out to, to, to battle uh, uh, like God trained up Nimrod. Now, wickedness, wicked go forth from wickedness. Nimrod himself is two sides of a coin. Sacrificing to the Most High during these 20 years, and then wickedness. Right? How many people have lived life the opposite? You were wicked as fuck, and now you're ready to sacrifice to the Most High. Right? Welcome. Therefore, it became a proverb in the whole earth. Saying, from the wicked go forth wickedness, and it was current in the words of men from that time to this. Excuse me. And Terah, the son of Nahor, prince of Nimrod's host, was in those days very great in the sight of the king and his subjects, and the king and the princes loved him. And they elevated him very high, and Terah took a wife, and her name was Amphelo, the daughter of Cornebo. And the wife of Terah conceived and bare him a son in those days. Terah was 70 years old. When he begot him, and Terah called the name of his son that was born to him Abraham, because the king had raised him in those days and dignified him above all his princes that were with him. And then we will go into chapter 8. All right, and then in chapter eight, it might be chapter nine. I think it's chapter nine. Let's see. It might be chapter eleven. No, that's it. And the princes and Nimrod ruled securely. Everybody's one tongue. This is where it picks up from eight. And all the princes of Nimrod and his great men took counsel together. Put Mitzrayim, Cush, and Canaan with their families, and they said to each other, Come, let us build ourselves a city and 
in it a strong tower and its top reaching heaven and we will make ourselves fame so that we may reign upon the whole earth in order that the evil of our enemies may cease from us that we may reign mightily over them and that we may not become scattered over the earth on account of their wars. So, they did not want to be like us. Well, I'm insulted. Mount Kailash is a place full of mysteries. In 2001, the Chinese government witnessed something extraordinary that led them to immediately ban climbing Mount Kailash. But what exactly happened that day? Why has only one person ever reached the summit of this mountain? Why does everyone who attempts to climb it dies within two years? And the most astonishing fact, why does time seem to speed up at this mountain, causing aging at twice the normal rate? Is there really an ancient why does the speed of these videos never match? It never makes sense. A city called Shambhala, hidden beneath the Mount Kailash. NASA has observed something on this mountain that left their scientists stunned. And when Chinese sent a helicopter to investigate, what happened to it? We will reveal all these unanswered questions and mysteries in today's video. So stay tuned because what you're about to learn is beyond your imagination. Mount Everest, the highest peak in the world, has been successfully summited by over 7,000 people. So, if we went by what it said, let us go to uh, the highest place. That's what he's saying, right? There's a strong tower at the top reaching the heavens. So, when we compare that, well, this is a natural mountain here. It reaches 8,000 feet, right? Now, Mount Kailish is a little different. Yet, no one besides one person has managed to conquer Mount Kailash, which is 2,200 meters lower than Everest. When we get to the end of the story, this place has been destroyed, and only one third is left, and it's left a lot. It's left high up we'll scroll down and we'll say uh and the and as to the tower with the sons of men built the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up one third of it so you can't find that third and a fire also descended from heaven and burned another third. So that's two thirds being destroyed. See how the Most High likes to destroy things in threes? He divided into the three and he saved one of the pieces and he destroys the other two with what? Amazing feet. Fire from the sky to destroy it and the earth. What everybody's standing on, open up and swallow they work, which means what? It's nothing for him to have the earth swallow us up. It's nothing for him to just send fire through the sides of the sky. This is a show of force. I don't think people understand this. This is the most high showing us how powerful he is. You can barely throw a rock into the air, lobbing it and get it to land where you want. They can barely lob mortars and get them to land where they want. Wind calculations. Yet the Most High can send a flame out of heaven that can touch exactly what he wants. Another third of it burned, and the other third, one third, is left to this day it means it's got to be gigantic gigantic now who's good at math 
and that part which is aloft, that word me up in the air. The, its circumference is three days walk. This is interesting because this tower is weird because people walk around it every year. I think it's every year. And it takes them three days. And there's a certain part they walk fast because it ages them. It's supernatural. We'll discuss more about this mystery. Mount Kailash. How is this so much faster? Ash is renowned for its mysterious and spiritual stories. According to mythology, the city of Kuber, the Lord of Wealth, is located near Mount Kailash. It is believed that those who live virtuous lives are granted a place on Mount Kailash after death. This is why it is considered one of the most sacred and extraordinary mountain in the world, standing at 6,718 meters above sea level. Okay, so if we take an idea, it's constructed to look it, it, we're supposed to be looking for a tower, but what we see is left is a pyramidal shape. Are the pyramid mis, misnamed? Are these their ancient tower? Is this their ancient tower? Because you can see the lines in, all around it. You can see them when the snow is melted. You can see the lines are level. That means constructed. That means somebody leveled them. Natural things aren't necessarily level. That's why when you go into a valley or somebody builds a road in a valley, they have to use equipment to level the road. So, Mount Kailash is sacred to followers of Hinduism. Hinduism. Buddhism and Jainism. And Jainism. Hinduism. Now, that was the thing that came up when we were doing, uh, listening to Mr. Smith. M.W. Smith was looking under Javan and Jainism came up. Now, this becomes important because Jainism is the belief there is no beginning, there is no end, and there is no destroyer. So, if the Most High says, I was there in the beginning, I made it. I'll be there in the end. And he's promised that his end, a destroyer is coming, and then Janism is the exact opposite of our belief. It is the polar opposite. When you have something that is polar opposite in the natural environment, they're called enemies it is believed to be the abode of lord shiva who resides here with his wife parvati buddhist followers regard it as the domain of buddha demchok the symbol of ultimate bliss while jain refer to it as ashtapad where their first tirthankara rishabdev so these pillars are set up along their walk right attain nirvana it was in 1999 when Russian specialist Ernst Maldashev and his team took a bold step to uncover the mysteries of Mount Kailash. His expedition team included geologists, physicists. There you go. So look at this picture. You can see. See the sand? That's the part hit by fire, reduced to rubble. You can see all these lines, these layers, they're level each way. I'm not selling you a car. It, it's, it's obvious to me. And historians. They met Tibet Lamas and spent several months around. So we took all these scientists and they met with Lamas, spent several months climbing. On the Kailash region, Maldachev documented his findings in his book, Where Do We Come From? Revealing see his, see his head, that's that dola, right? Startling discoveries about Mount Kailash. 
His team concluded that Mount Kailash... His dolocephalic head is just like the alien, I mean the ant people. ...is actually a massive man-made pyramid. So, the scientists discovered that Mount Kailash is actually a massive man-made pyramid. Now, if you pay attention to the renderings in the background, they don't know or they're, they're not including only a third is left. So what we see on screen is just the one third, if this is correct. We're just seeing the one third that's left. So if you sat there and said, well, it would at least be half of its size taller and then because you have to say here's this here's the actual size and then you have to have one third of it and then a, another third so uh, one of the foundational sides broke out of four foundations and then fire burned the top and then that makes up the destruction of it, in my opinion. ...in ancient times. They claim that this pyramid is surrounded by several smaller pyramids and that the area is center of supernatural activity. Muldashev wrote that during the silence of the night, they heard strange whispering sounds from within the mountain. One night, along with two of his companions, he clearly heard stones falling. The sound seemed to be coming from within the mountain. It felt as if people were living inside this pyramid. One of the most... Did you just hear that? Let me play that one more time. ...coming from within the mountain. It felt as if people were living inside this pyramid. He clearly heard stones falling. The sound seemed to be coming from within the mountain. It felt as if people were living inside this pyramid. One night, along with two of his companions, he clearly heard stones falling. The sound seemed to be coming from within the mountain. It felt as if people were living inside this pyramid. It just might be me. I might, I might, it just might be me. <coughs> Nimrod being king of the earth. <coughs> Is there any chance he could have like made any kind of treaties with people under the earth? They like, Symbolic. Say, like, why would he build where they say Mount Kailish is above Shambhala, a, a, a well known underground city? I, I, I mean, I don't know. And all the men of princes of Nimrod, right? And this is the Tower of Babel, so they would have had access to the Chaldeans or anybody else. Other witches would argue that's not how you do it. You do it this way, but all of them would have came to an agreement. And they said, let us build cities. What does Mizrahim have? Uh, everybody claims, even though the books say it's beehives, Everybody say pyramids. What did the other people build? Uh, up and down America, you got pyramids. Pyramids. Don't give me that mound bullshit. The Spanish said they, they covered up anything that they couldn't destroy. Okay? So, again, are those mounds pyramids or are those mounds a different civilization merging with the pyramid civilization and then building mounds because they got permission to. Are the mounds the giants uh, be, be, uh, dying and then them being brought back into a reasonable area of the society and then like, uh, you know, being buried, a grave for them, right? You're not gonna dig a fucking hole that deep. You're like, fuck that dude, just put dirt on top of them. No. So, yeah. Come and let us build ourselves a city and in it a strong tower. And it's top reaching to heaven and we make ourselves 
fame that we may reign over the whole earth that nobody can mess with us and we won't be scattered because of their wars that was weird he's like he's like he said they're living in there and it's like they're actually saying let us build a place that we can live forever one night along with two of his companions he clearly heard stones falling the sound seemed to be coming from within the mountain it felt as if people were living inside this pyramid are they still building or or were they in the pyramid and they heard them outside and they were trying to 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 hear what they were doing outside see what if what if what if like any anything could be there, right what if they're inside and they can't get out but they want to get out like what's the world like now right what if they got a prophecy uh, oh, we don't see sunlight until they find their way in. Maybe they were like, this could be the day, guys. Right? And then, like, like, like that was in the 90s. Like, this is, uh, uh, I remember that day I thought they were going to open the gate. Right? <laughs> this, shit is, this shit is Johnny Quest wrapped in Indiana Jones, wrapped in all kinds of other stupid shit that everybody fucking makes all the damn time. Right? The mummy. But these aren't mummies, right? It's a civil. Imagine it's a civilization, whether it is humans or not. At this point, there is no telling if they can make all these other things happen. There's no telling what what access to knowledge they have. There's no telling what access to witchcraft they have. They have no telling what access to science they have. There's no telling what access to technology they have or anything else that we know nothing about now are the people under the earth said to uh live long time uh uh no death yes they are said to drink from the tree of life and make it into some kind of brew and only chosen people can drink from it was everybody that's dealing with this we already know nimrod dies is everybody dealing with this the council are they are, are they in relations with shangri-la are they drinking from are is this the same people is what they built a dust trap everyone dead and the people of shangri-la use it as a closet don't know. Reading this in combination with this brings whirlwind of thought. One of the most astounding coming from within the mountain. It felt as if people were living inside this pyramid. One of the most astounding experiences reported it coming from within the mountain. It felt as if people were living inside. I mean, I'm clicking on this thing. And it's not playing. Okay, I'm gonna stop for a second. Well, I tell you, this thing acts in a manner that it's hacked. It's just attacking different things, just not all at the same time. Today, it's attacking this video and this video alone. Why? I don't know. This pyramid. One of the most astounding experiences reported in the Kalash region is the accelerated passage of time. Visitors to Mount Kailash noticed that their hair and nails grew much faster than they should. In just two days, they grew as much as they typically would grow in two weeks. Now, usually they're on this three-day thing. They have a special event where four, three or four cultures come together to celebrate uh the event and then the event is them walking around mount kilish and it takes two to three days for them to trek through moreover their skin also appeared to age faster than usual this mysterious phenomenon suggested that time behaves differently in mount kailash area making people wonder whether some unseen forces are at work here 
affecting both the body and the mind. Russian doctor Ernest Muldashev mentioned a remarkable and mysterious incident in his memoirs. He wrote that a Siberian climber once told him that some mountaineers had managed to reach a certain point on Mount Kailash. But as soon as they did, they suddenly appeared much older. Within a year, those mountaineers died of old age. Now, let's talk about the two lakes at the base of Mount Kailash. Mansarovar, you're not a child, you're a man. So stop wearing so many layers to go outside. Now, let's talk about the two lakes at the base of Mount Kailash. Mansarovar and Rakshaspa. These two lakes situated next to each other are completely opposite in nature. Mansarovar Lake is the world's highest freshwater lake and is known for its calm and serene nature. It's circular in shape, resembling the sun. Despite the high altitude and cold temperatures, the lake never freezes, and no waves appear on its surface. It gives an extraordinary feeling of a place to anyone who looks at it. On the other hand, Rakshasthal, located next to Mansarovar, is the world's highest salt water lake. Its <coughs> waters are so salty that no life can survive in it. The lake is always turbulent, as if filled with some internal restlessness. It is said that Rakshasthal was created by Ravan, a devoted worshipper of Lord Shiva. Before reaching Mount Kailash, Ravan bathed in Rakshasthal and meditated there. According to mythology, as soon as Ravan submerged in Rakshasthal, the lake became filled with demonic powers, and his thoughts also turned dark. The question arises, why are these two lakes so different? This what the fudge? Fudge nougat brownies? What? The lake became filled with the Ravan bathed in Rakshasthal and meditated there. The Rakshasthal was created by Ravan, a devotee. See, this makes sense. Now, what is this guy? See, now this is, now this makes all kinds of senses. Unbelievables, right? Since from the Smiths and takes me the uh, minutes. So they say is this, uh, no record of this damn temple for us, but they've got the records of Ravan, right? Ravenna. Why do we have Ravenna here? Why is there always a Ravenna? Uh, it's almost like Ravenna in Springfield, right? So this might be the answer we're looking for. And uh, I really didn't see it before. So let's just keep in mind. Um, the lake is always turbulent, as if filled with some internal restlessness. Let's keep in mind, like, we just read how Nimrod served the Most High for 20 years, right? And something about that made me think about the peace and calm of the first, uh, ignore the Buddhist stuff. Just take what matches what we're reading. There's good Nimrod, there's bad Nimrod. There's parable for Nimrod. When you train your son up, like God trained Nimrod for battle. And then there's the parable for Nimrod, for because when Nimrod's son is wicked, wicked come from wickedness, right? This is what we just read. Now here we go with well, here's these two lakes that are, you know they're kind of connected, but the what connects them is this tower, and then that's kind of weird, right? Because one is always turbulent, and that's bullcrap. You cannot have that, and then one should freeze, but it doesn't, be, but it's at the elevator. That's bull crap, too. What are you saying it's bull crap? You, that, that it's not happening? No, I'm not saying that. That's not what happened. There has to be a reason for that. Now this starts to explain what is the mysterious power that comes over people. They're using something, or is there something that was created that won't, one, uses this side and it is the reason why 
there is always perpetual motion in this lake and the one and then what it it, it whatever it does it, it it empties into this clean one or it takes the clean one and makes it, it, it the stuff dirty i i it it, it becomes see that would make a lot of sense if if my mouse works now okay let's go to the pack see this lake over here it would make sense if mountains drain water into this lake all the time this lake should always actually overflow but because they're using some kind of machine or they created some kind of machine it always takes water from this side but like a slow tap like a gerbil feeder and then whatever process happens then it dispels what well, uh maybe salt crystals as well with uh the 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 the, the whatever the result i forgot what i forgot how that would be called uh but Maybe this accounts for the time uh, disturbance. It is said that Rakshastal was created by Ravan, a devoted worshipper of Lord Shiva. See, again, if you sat there and said that Ravan, or they not calling him R Ravenna, right? That's what they write on screen. He's devoted to the Lord. You forget the name that they add. He's devoted to the Lord. He is a worshiper of the Lord. I'll flip back. He's, he built altars. He sacrificed. Our civilization was overthrown. They just came back and put uh, Shiva on everything. Or Shiva on everything. Just like uh, it's hard to prove uh, this Jesus existed. Oh, look up the Shiva and stuff. Did Shiva exist? Well, it's it's kind of a metaphor. Well, either he did or he didn't. And then this argues in the same thing. Well, they clearly use the word Lord and God together. Hey, yeah. Hey, Mom. Yeah, hey, uh, I'm recording, and yet they use the word Lord separate from God in the same. See, again, it gives you the same confusion that we get in the Bible. Is this saying, right, the same confusion? Is there saying God is one thing and Lord is another and Lord God is another? And see, this, this is the rabbit hole we don't really want to with, man, but we have to start asking it, right? Because still, this is the take, remove the names, add Nimrod, and Nimrod, a devoted worshiper of the Lord. It's, it's the same fucking story. You got you got to go here to when he was a good guy, and he fought for his brothers. It's the same story, right? So let's let's go let's go a little further, and uh, before reaching Mount Kailash, Ravan. Paid in Rakshastal and meditated there. According to mythology, as soon as Ravan submerged in Rakshastal, the lake. So the meditation is the what? Ooh, be quiet and listen. What are you listening to? Are you listening to your heart, right? That's still going to take us right back to this book, right? And it, it, upon his heart's desires. This is, this is. I, I think this is where they, they link together. I, I think this is where they link together. That's, that's my opinion for right now.
Ick became filled with demonic powers, and his thoughts also turned dark. The question arises: Why are these two lakes? See that 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 still goes to say, this was a guy that was good, and then assumably at this point turned bad. So different, despite being in the same geographical region. Mythology provides fascinating stories behind these lakes. Science offers a clearer understanding of the differences. Lake Mansarovar is fed by glacier melt water and precipitation, which keeps it fresh and maintains its status as a freshwater lake. It has an outlet allowing water to flow out, which helps in maintaining the quality of the water and preventing the accumulation of salts. Rakshastal, however, is a salt water lake because it has no outlet of water to escape. Over time, as water evaporates from the surface, the salts and minerals become concentrated, making the lake extremely saline and inhospitable. Then why wouldn't it just completely solidify? Maybe I got it backwards. Maybe it starts. They take it from Manawar. Since it don't have no drain, never overflows, but just accumulates with salt. But is it turned into a big salt bin? So maybe they need the salt water, and the, you know, and then opposite since the other lake has a natural uh, outflow. Table of light. This lack of drainage is what leads to the high salinity of Rakshastal. While Mansarovar's continuous flow of water helps it retain its freshwater properties. Additionally, Rakshastal's more rugged and turbulent appearance can be attributed to local wind patterns and its crescent shape, which amplifies the feeling of unrest. Have you heard stories about Bigfoot? While similarly, Yeti. Don't they come from countries that use crescents? And so why would they say that a crescent shape amplifies the feeling of unrest? Or Himalayan snowman is a gigantic creature which is said to have been seen in the remote regions of Mount Kela. So we're saying it wrong. It's not, we've been taught to say Himalayan. It's not, it's, it's that Himalayan. So it's Himal, like the language Tamal. See? and the Himalayas. People living near the Himalayas for years claim to have seen this mysterious being with their own eyes. Energy providers don't want you to know about this trick that can heat houses practically for free. All right, listen up, folks. This, however, No concrete evidence has been found to prove its existence. Some believe the Yeti could be a giant bear, while others think it's a wild human or even an ancient being. Many Tibetans and Nepali people believe that the Yeti roams around Mount Kailash, and various stories about it have been passed down through generations. Some call it a brown bear, while others think it's a wild human. There's even a belief that if it attacks people and may even eat them. But do you know Maybe. that Mount Kailash is considered the center of the earth or Axis Mundi? According to many religious and mythological beliefs, Mount Kailash is the place where heaven and earth meets. It is called the axis of the universe, the spine that connects all life and energy. Ancient scriptures describe the Axis Mundi as the point where Earth and sky meets, balancing the entire planet, making it the center of the world. In Hinduism, Mount Kailash is not only the abode of Lord Shiva, but also the place from where the entire universe is the one. It holds a sacred and mysterious position in the religious and spiritual beliefs of the world. Interestingly, some claim that the distance from Mount Kailash to Stonehenge is exactly 6,666 kilometers. And it is said to be the same 6,666 kilometers from the North Pole. Additionally, the distance from Mount Kailash to the South Pole is often quoted as 13,332 kilometers. 
These numbers are often cited to add to the mountain's mystical allure, suggesting that Mount Kailash is not just a physical location, but a cosmic center, radiating powerful energies that connect different parts of the world. However, okay, so the numbers are wrong. He's going to explain that here in a second, but just think about what he said. The cosmic center. And what are we talking about? Outside of the Ham, uh, Tamal, Hamal, Himalaya, outside of the Himalaya, you have India. And in, in a certain portion of India, they're saying that's the center, center, right? The center of it all, right? So let's build ourselves a city and let's build ourselves a tower. And so. When we look closer, these distances don't quite match up. In reality, the distance from Mount Kailash to Stonehenge is approximately 6,600 kilometers, which is close, but not exactly 6,666. The distance from Mount Kailash to the North Pole is about 5,800 kilometers significantly lesser than the suggested 6666 kilometers. Similarly, the distance to the South Pole is around 13,000 to 14,000 kilometers, not the claim 13,332. These numerical claims, while intriguing, oh, don't me. hold up. Oh, I see it. Oh, shit. Oh, it's the, it's the center. Oh, shit. It's not the center of the world. It's the center of the two civilizations. Ah, <laughs> and <laughs> ah, isn't that funny? Is they came from here and moved here and took the people from here and moved them out there. And where's the center between them? Well, it's roughly here, uh, right? Some somewhere around there. I can grab a ruler. And it might even put us here. But this is where he's calling Shinar Center. It's the distance that, right? Like, look, they're traveling from different areas of the land of Canaan. It doesn't say Ham broke any rules, it's that Can Canaan did. So, Nimrod is bringing them from these regions and he, from the Mediterranean. Now, if you take the Mediterranean Sea in Turkey and say, what is the distance from there to this mountain that's close enough to center India? And then say the distance from the man-made mountain into Indonesia. Or, 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 or even that they took islands further out, you, you can say, you know, to, 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 to the edge of, of Indonesia territory before it goes into Polynesian territory. Who knows what they're saying to the center, uh, the center between what? Is it just the civilizations, the two cultures? Because that's what it seems to revolve around. You know, is uh, again. I, I, I see it now. Their, their cultures are, are 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 interwoven. Remember the age of, of all the white dudes running around with samurai looks and samurai hair. Ke, uh, Keanu Reeves never left that shit. He's like, this looks good for me. I don't I don't want to change. Okay. To the geographical scrutiny, the use of the numbers like six thousand six hundred sixty six. Oh, yeah. and 13,332 may have been chosen for this symbolic or mystical appeal, but they don't reflect actual measurements. Nonetheless, Mount Kailash remains as an extraordinary place, revered in multiple religious traditions, and considered the spiritual access of the world by many, regardless of the exact distances involved. Do you know that Mount Kailash, one of the most sacred mountains in the world, has never been climbed by anyone while many mountaineers now look at that angle see at this angle at looking at it you can see all the see they showing us one of these faces probably the face over here 
where it's, it'll show all the lines are parallel. Now, what you can do is you can see the lines are parallel on one face and they tilt it on another face. So it's like like in the leaning tower of Pisa. So this is the way it's actually actually sitting. Here, I'll mimic it so my camera matches what's on the screen. Oh boy, that's hard to do. There it is. That's how it's actually. So if you actually got inside and started walking around, all the floors would be at this slope, what matches the outside. See, I, I, I believe the word is correct and, and I don't I don't think uh anything matches this ex except for this um because when you study this it's got rubble all on the outside right down to the pebbles you know so reach the top of the highest peak in the himalayas mount kailash still stands untouched what makes this mountain so special that no one can conquer it? Let's talk about the few people who try to climb Mount Kailash and what happened to them. One of the story is about a Russian mountaineer named Sergei Setekov. He tried to climb Mount Kailash, but as he got closer to the top, he started feeling very weak and uneasy. He said his heart began to beat faster and a strong fear took him over, making him decide to turn back. The closer he got to the summit, the worse he felt. But as soon as he started moving away, he felt much better, and his mind cleared up. Another famous mountaineer, Reinhold Messner. Hey, so I stopped getting random lotto tickets and now average $22,000 using this instead. You probably believe winning the lot known for climb oh it's a little turtle oh bring the turtle back bring me the turtle bring me the ninja turtles in the 14 highest mountains in the world was also offered a chance to climb mount kailash by the chinese government but surprisingly mesmer refused the offer even though he was known for doing the impossible he understood that Mount Kailash is not just another mountain to climb. After this, the Chinese government banned any attempts to climb Mount Kailash, respecting its deep spiritual meaning. Mount Kailash is 6,718 meters high, which is lower than many other mountains in the Himalayas. Many people have climbed much taller mountains like Mount Everest, 8,848 meters, and K2, 8,611 meters. But no one has set foot on top of Kailash. How is it that we have conquered the tallest mountain on Earth? But this smaller mountain remains untouched. The answer may lie in the spiritual importance of Mount Kailash. According to Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism and Bon, this mountain is where the god lives. For Hindus, it is the home of Lord Shiva. For Buddhists, it is the place of Buddha Dev Chok. And for Jains, it is where Rishabh Dev attained enlightenment. Because of this, many people believe that Mount Kailash is not meant to be climbed. It is so sacred that people think climbing it would disturb its divine energy. So, while the Mount Kailash remains unconquered, see that angle right there? Like, uh, that's the angle where it looked like it's sitting level, right? But in reality, it's not because we saw from the other side. But this this reveals all these layers were built level, meaning they took one brick. And they cemented it on its end, where they, where they, where they put pressure on it at one end with a rock. They, they, they took a line and tied it to another end. And when they thought it was balanced, they, 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 they pinned it with a rock, and that's a straight line. And then they started laying brick to that straight line, because that's exactly how bricklayers lay brick.
conquered by mountaineers, the real question is, is it too difficult to climb? Or have we all agreed that some things are better left untouched? When China saw that no one could climb Mount Kailash, they made a bold decision. They sent a helicopter to reach the summit of Kailash. However, flying helicopters and planes over Mount Kailash is strictly prohibited as the weather in this area can change suddenly and no aircraft can remain stable for long. After many days of weather research, China selected a clear day and sent a helicopter towards Mount Kailash. Initially, everything seemed fine. The people inside the helicopter were enjoying the breathtaking view of Mount Kailash, thinking that everything was going smoothly and that they would reach the summit. But as they gained more altitude, the environment began to change. Clouds started gathering over Kailash and avalanches became visible. The most terrifying moment came when dark clouds surrounded the helicopter. They tried to ascend further, but soon lightning struck and heavy snowfall began. The air pressure at high altitude increased so much that controlling the helicopter became extremely difficult. Chinese scientists reported that due to the unique geographical position of Mount Kailash, all the directions seemed to converge at one point, causing them to lose their bearings. Now you see why they actually call it Axis Monday. Monday, they are nowhere near the North Pole. They're nowhere near the South Pole. Yet, there's some kind of magnetic disturbance that does what? It ages you and you get lost because your compass goes to shit. Now do you see why nobody wants to actually, the re, why the real mountain climbers don't want to climb this mountain? Well, I don't want to age out in one day. And the ability to get lost is very easy because uh, your magnetic equipment doesn't work. During this, even their compass stopped working. With no other option, they decided to return. Gradually, they descended. Hearts racing, but safety returned. This event made Chinese realize that Climbing or conquering this mysterious mountain is beyond their capabilities. If the mysteries of Mount Kailash have intrigued you, make sure to check out our in- All right. That's where we're going to end for right now. Uh, uh, two and a half hours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, if you turn it off in the first 20 minutes, you're lost. You don't have... The secrets that everybody else does now. So, ah, the eyelashes back again. All right, everybody. Oh, don't think as this is useless information. We're this is going to help you in the future. May most high bless you. Those that walk righteous, or may your children be chosen to rebuild Yerushalayim.